Hello, this is Gavin Bottrell. My website's hickorygolf.co.uk. Today I'm going to be telling you about this set of Forgan made irons with hickory shafts and um, as you can see my workbench I always have a good few clubs at some state of restoration so uh, anyway we'll um, commence looking at these Forgan irons. So this isn't a set of um, irons that came together, it's, uh, as I've termed in other videos, it's an associated set. So they all have this uh, flag in hole clique mark, um, which was used by Forgans in the late 1920s. And um, this set is more than enough to um, form uh, certainly the basis of a full set. You'd only need a couple of woods to go with it and you would have a full set of clubs. Okay, so the first one I'm going to talk about is the one iron and this has loft of 25 degrees. Okay, I should say straight off that all of these have line faces. Um, People have asked me quite recently whether I prefer line or dot faces. I don't have a preference. Um, actually, there's a, an old book that was done in the, I think the late 1960s, early 1970s called The Search for the Perfect Swing. And um, with the technology at the time, they looked and did some studies as to how important face markings were to uh, the flight of golf balls. Um, I can't remember exactly without checking, but I think what they said was that on irons that were less than a seven iron, that uh, it didn't really matter. And they actually did some tests with having some identical irons, some with face grooves and some completely smooth. From my own experience, I think that line faces are uh, give a better performance of flight, particularly on very short irons, on the very most lofted irons. But then again, what I've also seen is people who have got dot-faced clubs, they actually can um, get uh, a little Dremel drill or something like that and actually redo the dots. And um, I'm, I mean, I've, I've played with some very good players that have got dot-faced irons and you, w you wouldn't at all think that it made any difference to their game. So anyway, a one iron. And this one iron has some three initials here, WLE on the sole. That was almost certainly the original owner. I don't know who that was. Uh, it also has a Forgan shaft in this. It's got a little stamp there. Let's see if the camera can pick that up. Um, if you're new, relatively new to Hickory Golf, always have a quick look down just below the grip and Quite uh, commonly you will see the maker's stamp there on the shaft. Generally, it doesn't really matter to, to me, in my opinion, who, who made the shaft. It's a case of, is it a good shaft? Is it, does it actually have good stiffness properties? One way, thing to look out for is if you really put it over your knee and you, you actually bend it quite with some force, particularly about mm, eight inches above the, the hosel, does it actually set in that do, if you actually apply some force and then look at it, does it actually stay slightly bent? Now, that's one thing you will see much more commonly when using modern hickory, that it, it can set into one direction. But that said, actually, if you then just re-bend it, it will re-bend into you know, a fairly straight uh, shaft. So, but it's it's one sort of rule of thumb I look for when I'm I'm trying to figure out whether a shaft is going to be good and strong enough for play. So the one iron at 25 degrees. Then we have a three iron at 32 degrees, which is I would say a modern seven, a three iron in hickory days. Again. It has a line face. Also, 
uh, I do have one, but um, what you could do if you really were trying to be fastidious is you could get a modern groove sharpener tool. You can pick them up off eBay for very little money and rub that through the grooves and give you some really sharp grooves. The one thing about hickory golf is there is actually no rules concerning groove depth. So a one iron, a three iron, then a, a mashie, which is in other sets often stamped five, but this isn't stamped with any number, it's just stamped with a name. And this one has the name T. Simpson of Hesketh Golf Club. Did these ones? No, so actually yes. The one iron is stamped Forgan, the three iron is again stamped this Simpson of Hesketh. So I actually acquired these irons together. So the three iron and the five iron are stamped uh, Simpson Hesketh. And whilst I'm at it, the niblick is also stamped Simpson Hesketh. But going through the bag, so the mashie is 39 degrees. So between the one and the three, we've got seven degrees. And between the three and the mashie, we've got seven degrees. Next up, uh, we've got a six degree gap to the mashie niblick, which is at 45 degrees. And this one uh, just carries the forgan stamp and the, the flag in the hole, of course. And that's marked number seven. And then we've got another seven degree gap to the niblick, which is at 52 degrees, which is slightly more than gap wedges these days. Gap wedges uh, tend to come in at 50. Pitching wedges, 45, 46. Sand wedges, 55, 56. In terms of swing weights, the one and the three iron are at C1, so quite a bit less than a modern set, but actually as um, I've said in other videos, having particular lighter swing weights for longer irons in hickory, I feel is beneficial. Then it actually jumps up to the mashie at D0, then the mashie niblick at D0, and the niblick at D4. And that is, again, what I would um, expect to see in a, in a good balanced set, that the shorter irons have a higher swing weight than the longer irons. It tends to give you more feel. And then there is a putter, which is actually a Maxwell model. So it has holes in the hosel and it has extra weight down in the flange. Um, this one again, I've, I've cranked to have about three degrees of loft. So it's very suited to playing on modern greens. Greens a hundred years ago tended to be quite a lot longer than modern greens. So it's not uncommon to pick up hickory putters and if they were put on an accurate measuring scale, they would have as much as 10 degrees loft. And if it is a putting clique, they can have as much as 14 degrees loft, I've often find. That is the Forgan flag in hole set of irons. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment box below and um, please subscribe to my channel and you'll get a, a little notification when I post some new videos. And if you have any uh, direct questions you'd like to ask me, you can always e email me on info at timewarpgolf.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.